here we go then guys. Today we face off against Gillingham in a local Kent derby. The first time that Maidstone, since they have reformed, will be taking Gillingham on in a competitive league match. It's going to be a really tough game, but I cannot wait to see how we do. We also have a really tough match in the FA Cup first round today as well. Let's see how we get on. So guys, welcome back to the Stones Rolling On Up and now to episode 41 of our series. We have been on some unbelievable form, we really have. If you missed last episode when we played against Cambridge and Wrexham, I would highly recommend going and giving it a watch. There'll be a link right above me for you to click on if you did miss it. But since that episode, we have been almost perfect with every game that we've played. We've only lost one of the games we've played since and we have won every other match that we have been involved in. And that includes every league game we have played. I cannot believe how well we are currently playing. And League 2 so far is looking an absolute blast. It really is. We are having so much fun. So since last episode when we played against Cambridge, we then faced off away at Rochdale and we got a 2-0 win. A very, very decent performance. A very good performance, must to be totally honest, especially away at a tough side like Rochdale. Won that 2-0. We then played Cheltenham at home and got a very, very narrow 1-0 win. It was a very tough game, but we scored from a set piece and it was all that was needed to beat Cheltenham in the end. And as a result, it carried on our brilliant form. We then had to play against Brighton's under-23s in the EFL trophy. That trophy that is just completely pointless. And even the fans in the game thought it was completely pointless because only 400 of them turned up to the watch the match. It's the lowest tense in the club's history by a distance. But we ended up losing that in the end 2-1. It was a very meh game, to be totally honest. I didn't play a very full strength, so I played some first-team players and some reserve players. And then we'd lost it in the end. So it wasn't too fussed though. We then went away to Forest Green. Rovers beat them 2-0 again. Another clean sheet for the side. Very, very good performance once more. We then had to face off though away at Exeter. Who are one of the few teams who have beaten us this season. They beat us in the EFL Cup on penalties. But this time when we went away to Exeter's ground. We beat them 2-1. We got a little bit of luck. We did go 1-0 down to full half time. And then we came back in the second half. I made a few tactical changes. And it worked. But we looked in the first half to be really off the pace. And then we kind of turned it around in the second half. Which was a good performance in the end. We then faced off against Leighton Orient. The team who last season in the FA Cup. We had that dramatic. Four, was it a 4-4? Four, four, a 3-3 three, three in the FA Cup replay in the second round. But this time around we had no such drama. We smashed them 4-0. Leighton Orient did have a red card. A bit of a kind of contentious red card. I wouldn't have really given a red myself for it, but we ended up beating them 4-0. Really comfortable performance, a really good game, especially from us going forward. And in the most recent game we played, which is now our record attendance, was at home to AFC Wimbledon, who we beat 3-1. So as a result of all of those games that we've played in League 2, we are well and truly in first place. We are 12 points clear of second place after only 17 games. I cannot believe how well we are performing and the fact that so many teams below us are consistently dropping points. It's just astounding. It really is. I did not expect to be doing this well. I know the media in the game thought we would be finishing in first place. I didn't think that would be the case. But you can see from the league table, you can see from the average ratings from the players, from the most player matches, things like that, we are just dominating this division. And I am loving it. I haven't had so much fun with a season in so, so long. But we are playing really well. And I just don't know kind of what we can do which would upset it. Because I've been rotating the side. I've been playing youngsters in the team. And even when we're doing that, we're still winning games comfortably. So it just seems that everything is just clicking currently. So long may it continue. We, of course, though, have the Kent Derby, as I've already mentioned, against Gillingham up first. And then we also have the FA Cup first round today. We've been drawn at home to League One title challengers Peterborough. So it's going to be very, very difficult that game. So we may not be getting past the first round this year in the FA Cup. We'll have to wait and see. That is the second game of this episode. But let's take a look at our tactics for the first match when we go away to Priestfield and face Gillingham. So with our squad, we're going pretty much full strength. 
It's Lewis Ward in net. He's only just come back from another injury. He got a hernia and was out for another few weeks. He's been quite injury prone since we signed him, unfortunately. So Julie Andrews was having to kind of deputise in net. But Lewis Ward is now back. It's then Dion Sanderson, Harry Clark and Stefan O'Connor with Joel Senior and Sam McCallum at fullback. It's then Cole Palmer who has really started to come into that Mazzala role alongside Maddie Smith who's been unbelievable this season so far. Jan Dander in attacking midfield and it's Jamie Thomas and then the youngster Gianmarco Tafani up front. Currently Ugbo's got a slight knock and isn't fully fit and I've dropped Martin Gillespie for Jamie Thomas just because Jamie's been playing better at the moment. So that's how we're lining up for the Gillingham game. Let's see how they're going to line up in this first game today. So let's submit our side then and see how they line up against us here. Now, of course, as I say, Maidstone, as far as I'm aware, haven't played Gillingham in a competitive league fixture since they reformed when they kind of after they went bust in 92. So this is going to be a really interesting game to take part in here. Gillingham are going with a very weird 5-2-2-1 formation. I don't think I've seen a single team playing that in FM this year, to be totally honest. So I have no idea how we're going to get on against them. Let's get into the dressing room note. I'm going to say to them passionately that we are favourites here. I mean, we are, based on how we've been playing, we should be winning every single game, essentially. Honestly, we've our form has been just ridiculous. It really has. I'm not doing a tunnel interview. I never do tunnel interviews. I cannot be bothered with them. But we are walking out here at Priestfield away in the amber and black, which is lovely to see that we're wearing our home kit at Gillingham Stadium. And let's see how we get on. Such a massive game this, it really is. I cannot wait to do the reverse fixture at the Gallagher. And it's worth noting we are now back at the Gallagher. They finished doing the, the stadium expansion to the ground. So we are now officially back at the Gallagher. I think the Wimbledon game just prior to this Gillingham game was the first game back at the newly extended stadium. So hopefully we can have a look and see what's how it looks now with the extension. Maddie Smith's corner there doesn't reach O'Connor at the far post. And it looks like it could be a Jill's counter-attack if we're not careful. Great challenge there, McCallum. Sadly, can't actually get the ball off the uh, player, though, from Gillingham. And it looks like it could be a highlight for them. I know it looks like we could count here. Come on, Dander. Good ball. Good first touch, Jamie. Jamie Thomas. I think that's going to be it, isn't it? Yeah, just kind of ricochets. I don't really know how that was a highlight because nothing really happened from it. But that's just one of those weird highlights FM does give you sometimes, it would seem. Oh, hang on. A Cole Palmer free kick. Come on, Coles. Decent ball in. Not going to reach him, sadly. Cole Palmer, it's worth noting, has really started playing well. In that Mazzala role, he kind of struggled initially, but he's now really starting to play very, very well in that position. I think he scored in his last three games, quite possibly. I know he's definitely scored in his last two. Hang on. What a brilliant ball. Jamie Thomas. How have you not scored, Jamie? That is very, very poor. I think it was Maddie Smith with the pass there, which is unsurprising because Matthew Smith has been unbelievable. He is the top performer in the league. He's got the most man of the matches as well. He's had such a good year so far in that deep line playmaker. I'm very pleased that's where we're playing him. But that first half has whizzed by. That is just gone completely. We've seen a couple of little highlights, but nothing really major other than that Jamie Thomas missed just then. And yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to say to them that was disappointing because it was. I want to see more from the lads. And let's see. I, I think this tactic Gillingham are playing is really kind of hampering us, to be honest. But I want to see more from us. We've been playing so well. Let's do do the job here against Gillingham as well. Dander with it here, though. Joel Senior now to McCallum at far post. Very good save once again by Andrew Mills, I think, in goal for Gillingham. I think I saw was his name. I know it was definitely with Mills. But come on, oh, O'Connor doesn't reach that. I have recently dropped McGuinness for Stefan O'Connor. McGuinness has been playing relatively poorly, so I've been giving O'Connor some more game time, and he's been playing pretty well. So at the moment, you're probably going to see O'Connor more often in that left centre-back role ahead of McGuinness. But I'm really not sure what to change here with Gillingham. We've got another corner. Let's see what happens here, though. O'Connor has won it. It's clipped off the bar, unfortunately. Just because of that weird tactic they're playing, I don't know if it's a good idea to put wingers on, maybe. I think maybe it might be, so I am going to. Let's take off Harry Clark. I'm going to put him at the left side there. Put Tafani on the right because he can play as a right winger. And I'm going to bring on Martin Gillespie on the left, I think. For, actually, no, let's bring on a Malazor. I haven't really given Malazor many chances, so let's put him on as a winger on that left. I'm going to pull the fullbacks back. I'm going to take off the overlap on that side. We'll let Palmer be the uh, kind of natural width on that side as well. 
And let's see if that can do us any favours or not, really. I'm actually putting it a little bit wider, too. I'm just not really sure. It's a, it's a really weird situation because, as I say, I haven't played this tactic, I don't think, the entirety of this FM. So I, I don't know what will be a good idea to try and break it down. I mean, if I could be bothered, I could probably go into the uh, analysis. Oh, hang on. Tafani has scored. The youngster has scored another goal. He has started playing really well, has Tafani for. This is the first time I'm really giving him a proper try out on his natural position on the right wing. But... Yeah, he's got five goals already this season. I think that's now his fourth in the league. And yeah, he's coming in really good for us at the moment. Just as a little bit part player, plays here and there. He's also a homegrown player at the club. So he helps with the filling the quota and stuff. And the fact that he can do a job for us is really handy. But a lovely goal there. Malazor kind of whips it in. And Tafani's just there at the far post to score. Really nice goal. Really, really good stuff from us. I'm thinking I might take off McCallum because he's booked and he's struggling for fitness. So let's take him off. I'll put Preston as a defensive fullback. We'll take off the overlap on those sides. And then hopefully um, we can kind of just see out the game now. Going to change the Malazor as well to being a more supportive player. Well, there's a highlight here. Uh, is it going to be a chance for Gillingham or is it going to be another chance for us? We haven't really seen much from Gillingham all game. Which, to be honest, is how it's been like in the vast majority of the games we played. Where we just kind of seem to shut teams out. Other than Exeter, the vast majority of the games we played off script. Oh, hang on. Brilliant ball from Tafani. Jamie Thomas... How has Thomas not scored off? Tell you what, actually, I'm taking Thomas off. He's played very, very poor. Let's get Gillespie on and see if we can see the game out now. Let's say I have faith in you. But yeah, we just have been seeing teams out and doing really well defensively. So that has been lovely to see. I'm just going to put us to balanced and then hopefully that should kill the game off now, maybe. We're into stoppage time now. It looks like it's going to finish 1-0. Is it going to? It certainly is. Get in there. Really good performance. Very quick game. But a really big win for us there. We've beaten Gillingham away in the local derby. And it feels wonderful as a Maidstone fan and the Maidstone boss in the game. That is lovely to get the job done over Gillingham. And we are 13 points clear now ahead of second place AFC Wimbledon. We are just playing so well. We're 21 points clear of eighth place Forest Green. So we're 21 points safe inside the playoffs at least as well unbelievable start to our season it really is of course having just played Gillingham though we now have the FA Cup first round game coming up at home to Peterborough which is in a week's time so I will see you in a few seconds for that Peterborough game in the cup so here we are then ready for the Peterborough game in the FA Cup and I've made a few changes to the lineup nothing too drastic I have, of course, put Julie Andrews back in net because, of course, Julie is the backup keeper. And as I always like to do, I like to play the backup keeper in the cup game. So Julie will start in net for us. It's then Dion Sanderson. I then put Buddy Joel back into the central defender cover role. And then it's still alongside Stefan O'Connor. Zach Swanson is in at right back alongside Sam McCallum. And then it's Cole Palmer, Matty Smith and Jan Dander. So the same midfield as the Gillingham game. With Martin Gillespie up front this time after the various misses by Jamie Thomas against Gillingham, I felt it only fair to give Gillespie the game. But then Tafani will be starting once again up front alongside Gillespie this time because, of the course, he did score against Gillingham. Ugbo also does make the bench. He's pretty much fully fit now, so he can get back onto the bench as well. That's though how we are going to line up for this game here against Peterborough. Let's see if we can get past the first round. So the Nets submit our side and see how Peter are going to line up against us. So they're going with a flat 4-4-1-1. They've still got Ivan Tony up front. Oh, that's going to be really difficult then to try and stop him scoring. He's really good both in real life and in the game. I think in real life Brentford might have just signed him for the championship. So it kind of shows you how good he is IRL. You also have Lucas Piers on as well on left midfield. Flipping it, this is going to be a really tough side. I think Peter were relegated from the championship at the end of last season in the game as well. So kind of suggests how good a squad they do have. Let's get into the dressing room though. I'm going to say to them to go out there and give the fans their money's worth. Of course, we are, for the first time in a long time, at least in this season, the underdogs in a game. But I am confident we are at home, so you never know. We could pull off a good kind of upset here against Peter. We're probably one of the kind of the biggest teams in the cup at the moment with us obviously only being in the first round we are at home in the amber and black so let's see how we get on in this match here i do hope we can get past the first round primarily because financially we are not doing very very well at the moment we have actually just got into negative figures for the first time in a long time with the club so we really could do with having a decent run once again in the fa cup Without it, we may find ourselves struggling and needing to sell someone possibly in the January. I'm not sure, but we'll have to kind of wait and see how we get on here. Swanson with a ball in. 
been saved by the goalkeeper Pim in net rather acrobatically. So uh, it looks like that's probably the end of our chances going forward here unless we get the ball off of Peterborough. Although they've lumped it up the pitch. Buddy Joel has won the header. Swanson's got it now. Sanderson, come on. Is it going to be our highlight or is it going to be a chance for Peterborough? I'm hoping it's going to be for us. I'm also hoping that this should be a decent attendance because, of course, with it being a League One side, you'd hope it'd be a good turnout. Hang on, Gillespie's through. Come on, Martin. Oh, good save by the goalkeeper. I thought Martin would have put that away, to be honest, based on kind of how good he's been this season. But... Sadly, he doesn't. We've got a corner here, though. Maddie Smith, is O'Connor going to win this? He has, but he's gone miles over. Awful header from Stefan O'Connor there. Come on, guys. Let's kind of carry on our brilliant form from the league and see if we can do the job here against Peterborough. But I think they are either in fourth or fifth place in League One. So they are no pushovers at all of Peterborough. That is for sure. But it's going to be so difficult. It really is. I, I don't really know what we're going to do if it goes to replay. I'm, I, we will either do the replay in this episode or I may be very tempted to actually, if it goes to replay, play it straight away for next episode. We we'll have to kind of wait and see. We'll, oh, I mean, it may not go to replay. We may get smashed or we may be able to get past Peterborough. I'm not sure yet. Of course, it's nil-nil here after 30 minutes, but we'll have to just kind of see what happens exactly. This is a long highlight, though, from Peterborough. They've been very patient with the ball here. And it looks like they are getting it out wide. Oh, come on, please close him down, McCallum. He has actually kind of got the ball, but not really. Tony with a decent header there. Ivan Tony, and it's just gone over. Peter are very much looking the more likely to score based on the stats. Well, I'm saying that we have had more shots, but we've only had one on target. So it's not kind of being brilliant. Although Peter have got an injury to Dembele on the right side of their midfield, which might do us a favour. Nil-nil at half-time. I'm going to go and say to them, if we can get a goal and make us favourites, and because it would do, really. I'm going to say to them, you weren't that bad. I'm going to say to the midfield, though, and the attackers, I'm not happy because we haven't seen enough from them. We really haven't. So people have been forcing to change. They've subbed off Dembele on the right-hand side. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in terms of if the play they brought on is any better or not. I don't know the names of enough of the players currently floating around the League One sides at this stage in the database. Hang on. Oh, I thought Gillespie was going to nick that in, but he kind of stumbled as he won the ball and then kind of just lost it again. Uh, it, it looks like the five at the back isn't really helping us at the moment because it looks like the extra width for Peterborough is kind of helping them out. It's a really good tackle there from O'Connor, but I think it's going to still fall to their player that has done. Right, as a result, let's go 4-2-3-1. We'll do what we did last time. We'll put Tafani on the right. I'm going to put Buddy Joel there, but I'm going to want Ugbo to play it on the left-hand side. He can play on the inside forward on attack, and then we'll pull the wing-backs back a bit. So we'll go like this. I'm not going to put the wing-backs onto defensive at all, though. And we'll go a little bit wider as well to see if that can kind of help us out or not. Come on, lads. We haven't seen enough from us going forward. We really haven't. We've been very, very average, really, in this game. But it doesn't look like we're going to really be doing anything currently. We're really struggling to get a grip of this match at all. Well, I said that we are having a few more chances, but we're just not seeing anything. Okay, right, let's take off Tafani because he is tired. We'll swap Gillespie over with Jamie Thomas. We're going to go attacking as well. And I think that's all we're going to change for the moment. I, I really don't know what else we can change. Maddie Smith corner here. And I caught it at the far post. He isn't winning that. This is where I kind of wish I had McGuinness on the bench to bring him on for those corners because we've had a lot of them. But I kind of hasn't been doing the job, sadly. Ah, oh, we're really struggling. Okay, right. Palmer is having a very poor game. So let's bring on Canas. We'll swap Canas and Manny Smith over. And that's all we're going to do just for this moment in time. Can we get a goal? We need to get through, really, for the financial size of things. It's a Peter free kick. They scored. This is probably game over if they score this. And, oh, my goodness, it's just gone wide. Right, okay. We're putting the lads up front. We're going to go like this. We're going to push the wing backs up as well. And we're going to put Sanders on a more cover roll. It's going to be very, very risky doing this. But at the end of the day, we don't really have anything to lose because we're just we're not creating enough at all. We really aren't. Let's go like this and just see if we can... Oh, hang on. Gillespie with it here. Come on. What are you going to do with it, Martin? Not going to do anything. And we've thankfully actually got a corner. The defender could have probably left that and it would have been a goal kick. But we got lucky there. Matty Smith corner. Oh, we're not going to see anything. Thanks for that game. Oh, no. It's a very dangerous free kick here for Peterborough. I think, realistically, we're probably going out of the FA Cup for the first time in the first round for, I think, is it two years? I can't remember now. But Piazza on free kick, brilliant free kick, to be honest. Really good goal. 
I think that is probably game over for us here. I really do, sadly, which is very annoying, but I don't think we're getting anything from it. Doesn't look it. We've not been outclassed, but we're just not really shown enough going forward. So I'm going to say to them that I'm far from pleased because I am. It's a little bit disappointing, but I guess we can then just focus on the league at the end of the day. We have gone out at the first hurdle with the FA Cup here this time. Still though, of course, we are top of League 2. We're doing brilliantly in that, so hopefully we can continue on a good form and then having less distractions will help us there. Let's see in the league what we're going to come back for. I'm thinking we may come back right about the middle of December. We'll probably come back for the Port Vale and the Newport game. So relatively easier, I guess, your opposition. Port Vale are mid-table. Newport are struggling down the bottom of the league. So we'll come back for those two games, both at home at the Gallagher. And we'll see how we can do in those matches next episode. So guys, that just about wraps up today's episode. Overall, some okay performances and then some not so good performances there from us, to be honest. Brilliant start to it, to the episode when we played off against Gillingham and beat them in the local derby match. Really, really chuffed with that result, but sadly, we couldn't beat League One opposition in Peterborough in the FA Cup. It was always going to be a tough ask, even though we are performing so well in League Two. Playing a team at the very top of League One is always a difficult challenge, especially when they've just come down from the championship as well. They're always going to have a strong squad, and in this case, their team just was better than ours on the day, and they got the job done against us. Sadly, it does mean we have gone out in the first round, and we aren't going to be getting that nice little financial boost that we got last year, and it could give us a few issues when we come around to January and having to possibly sell players. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, we don't, but... It all depends on how we're doing financially. At the moment, we are in the negative, so it doesn't look brilliant. But still, the league itself does look pretty brilliant, that's for sure, with us sitting very comfortably on top. Of course, when we come back next episode, we've probably played about another four or five league games, so I have to see if we're still quite so far ahead by that point. Hopefully, though, guys, you have enjoyed today's episode, and if you have, then please do chuck a like on it. It really does help the channel out. And also let me know down in the comment section, number one, what you thought of that Gillingham game in terms of us beating our local rivals. And number two, let me know as well, if we do have to sell anyone based on the fact that the club is struggling financially, let me know who you think it should be. Because I'll be really interested to kind of hear who you think may be best to possibly ship out if we have to. Finally though guys, if you are looking forward to seeing any more of my content, whether that be the stones rolling on up or any of my experiments, then do subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with everything here on LS Plays FM. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you again next time.